Greetings. This is August 10th at 10 a.m. We are looking at some images from Rapunzel A, first uh, traveling south, looking eastwards near the 70 mile house area at fire 42324, and then returning northwards uh, looking at the same fire again. So we see some growth, some uh, additional smoke build up. Today the winds have died down in the morning, uh, two kilometers from the south. And if we look at the forecast, uh, winds build up in the afternoons, that heat of the day. And uh, Saturday, tomorrow, we're looking at a potential wind shift coming from the west, blowing to the east. Uh, if you're on the eastern side of these fire areas, You'll want to take a look at your position and your proximity and know your routes and have your resources ahead of time. Check the links below because you'll get uh, information from BC Wildfire Service and uh, the CRD and the TNRD so you know what's going on. First, let's zoom into the area around 100 Mile House. Uh, this is south of Buffalo Lake. This is an area that was put under evacuation order and we're looking at BC Wildfire Service. And this fire is at approximately 12 hectares and it wasn't showing up on infrared. There have been recent lightning strikes in the area and these have culminated into wildfires and other spot fires. So very busy area right now. And it looks like we have a couple new indications just north of Horse Lake. Uh, approximately seven kilometers east of 100 Mile House. We're jumping southwest now to Fire 41745. This is an area northwest of Big Bar and uh, it's called the Wild Goose Lake Fire. It's grown to approximately 1400 hectares in size and the satellite imagery indicates there's a lot of large forested blocks in this area and uh, it has been making movement to the northeast. This is the fire that we were looking at in those opening photographs, uh, fire 42324, and it's grown to approximately 400 hectares in size. It's in the Sodium Lake area. This fire is in the general region of burn areas that were involved in the Elephant Hill fire last year. So this fire originally was kind of a oblong shape of running west to east and now it's morphed into more of a north-south direction. And the cause now is indicated as lightning. Zooming back on the BC Wildfire Service map, and I'll have the link in the description below, we can see there those red dots are new fires. Uh, there's been a lot of activity with increased lightning and there's changing situations due to the wind dynamic that's going on right now. There's gusting in the afternoon and uh, variation overnight, uh, wind shifts and changing directions depending on uh, the, whether you're in a valley or you're on a hillside or you're up on the ridge lines and plateaus. We're jumping over to the NRC data. This is an image of Canada from 7.43 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and a lot of activity in British Columbia and Western Alberta. Looking at uh, infrared being displayed for the last 24 hours. And if we zoom into the region south of 100 Mile House, we can see a lot of activity and we'll deselect the 24 hour indications and just look at what's been happening in the last 12 hours. Very volatile, very active. And if we deselect the 12 hour indications and just look at what's happened in the last six hours, we can see a lot of new heat being generated. And we'll zoom in and take a look and we'll see that some of these look like control strategies. Uh, there's pattern signatures in the infrared. We're zooming into the area north of Horse Lake and south of Buffalo Lake. And we can see these four infrared dots. This is this 12 hectare parcel that uh, in a forested block that has caused the evacuation alert south of Buffalo Lake along Houseman Road. 
Now we've moved to the area east of 70 Mile House near the Sodium Lake area. We're looking at the last six hours of activity and we can see these control signature infrared patterned hot spots that may indicate a control strategy going on right now. Moving eastwards to Young Lake and looking at the last six hours, we can see a kilometer and a half east of Young Lake, there are new hot spots being indicated. And these are occurring kind of in within a rough perimeter that uh, was indicated on infrared last night. Now we've moved west across Highway 97 over to the Big Bar area north of Meadow Lake. Uh, this is the Wild Goose Lake fire. We can see extensive new patterning that's occurred within the last six hours. This fire has grown from an estimated 840 hectares yesterday to approximately 1400 hectares today. And if we zoom out and look at all the activity currently going on for the last 24 hours, we can see that there's a lot of heat being generated in this fire. Just going back to uh, the area east of 70 Mile House uh, with all 24 hour indications on the satellite map. And this gives us an idea of where the heat is coming from, how wide the uh, area has spread. I'm going to estimate that the, that the section involved is approximately 5 kilometers by 5 kilometers. And back down to Young Lake, with all the activity that's uh, showing for the last 24 hours, we can see it's a, approximately a 4 kilometer square area. And these indications of infrared heat may be half a kilometer, a kilometer off. So where the dot is being displayed doesn't necessarily mean that's where the dot is. It's just where the sensor is picking up heat indications. Now we're back at the area south of Buffalo Lake looking at the satellite imagery with the infrared overlaid for the last 24 hours showing the heat that's being perceived by the satellite sensors and we can see it's approximately a kilometer to two kilometers south of Buffalo Lake. And I'd like to jump over to the area north of Canham Lake uh, to the east of Mahood Lake and a lot of activity going on right now in the full 24 hour map. We are looking at rough terrain, limited accessibility. So if you're in this area, you wanna be very aware of what routes you're taking uh, what escape routes you have, uh, where the wind direction is going, and where the most heat on these fire flanks are. So the general progression has been from the south to the north and from the west to the east. So check with the official websites below to see if they're calling an evacuation alert because uh, they're anticipating uh, wind changes, they've got the most up-to-date data and they're seeing better infrared than we're seeing here online because uh, they've got ground evaluation tools and equipment. Let's take a quick look at the Big Bar Cam from Drive BC. A lot of haze. Uh, the sky is uh, covered in this gray particulate matter. Uh, visibility is going to be limited in the air and uh, we're not seeing the direction that the smoke is going and this may affect how well we perceive uh, infrared hot spots online so you're going to have to get multiple sources of information to assess where the fire danger is. We've rolled over to the cam at uh, Sheridan Lake, Highway 24 on Dry BC, and their new cam uh, pointing eastwards. And a lot of haze in the area in the low-lying valleys and around the lakes. So if you are traveling, check out Drive BC, and they'll have the alerts, and you can also look at the webcams and maybe get an idea of uh, what you're heading into. We're now looking at a screen from Windy from last night, and this is a great resource. They've been very accurate last summer and this summer. Uh, they use multiple sources, uh, weather stations to coordinate a very good 
picture of what's going on in the weather right now. And what this is showing us is multiple directions of wind last night. Uh, this gave me some alarm. We're seeing winds that are traveling from the northwest, from the west. Then if you cross the valley, the wind is coming from the south or the southeast. So there's a lot of variation and there is the potential for wind shifts when we're looking at these sort of meandering patterns. And this is an image now from this morning, two kilometers traveling from the south to the north. And don't forget those afternoon breezes. There can be gusts up above 30 kilometers an hour. And we could see some precipitation come in by Sunday. Uh, hopefully the lightning stays away and we just get the moisture. But uh, assess your situation. Uh, check on your neighbor. Uh, be safe, everyone. Keep your nose to the breeze. Thank you very much for watching.